My name is Dave Knapp. I have the honor of being the city manager in Cupertino. And I just have one short comment, really. And that is that all great cities have two things in common. They have a great location, and they have a group of talented citizens who are dedicated to the business of building community. And Cupertino is blessed to have both of these. And therefore, this is a great city. And I'd like to, without further ado, introduce the mayor of this great city, Dr. Michael Chang. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our council chambers. Um, how do you like the decoration tonight? It's pretty good, huh? I think the staff has really uh, gone out of their way to think of how to creatively change the mood in here a little bit. Usually, I don't know, what, 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 what if we were to have a council meeting and we have this kind of dramatic lighting? That side, it almost looks romantic over that side. <laughs> and this side, well, it looks very American. But this is an event that all our council members really enjoy. Once a year, we recognize people in our community that have taken that extra step for our community. And it's an uh, activity that we enjoy heartily. And we learn about some of these folks would be people we have worked with over the years. And others have been just doing good things without our knowledge about. So it's going to be a great evening of recognition and great evening of uh, fellowship and just celebration here tonight. So I want to extend our hearty welcome to everybody here tonight. And to mark this very special occasion here tonight, uh, our Congressman Mike Honda uh, has a special message that he has asked a representative to bring forth to us. So uh, would Christine Epers uh, come up, please? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Christine Epres, and it is my honor to be here on behalf of Congressman Mike Honda. Unfortunately, Congressman Honda is unable to join us this evening. He's working very hard in Washington representing the residents of Cupertino. And I'm sure most of you know that Cupertino became a part of the 15th Congressional District of California this past January. So he's very happy to be representing all of you in the halls of Congress. Um, just want to extend a very big congratulations on behalf of Mike. It's our honor to be presenting congressional certificates on his behalf. It looks like we have volunteers from all different fields and issues, including education, public safety, emergency preparedness, other issues such as cultural awareness, and these are all issues that Mike cares about very much. And so we invite all of you to contact our office if there's anything that we can do. And again, congratulations to all of the recipients this evening. Thank you. Thank you very much for the special message. So on with our program. We're here to honor eight uh, individuals and organizations uh, this year. And I'm going to start off with the first two, and then we'll, I'm going to pass it to the Vice Mayor, Sandy James, and she's going to do the next two, and then she'll pass on to our other council members. I should really introduce them, should I? Uh, Vice Mayor, Sandy James. Uh, uh, Council Member Richard Lowenthal. <laughs> Council Member uh, Dolly Sandoval. And so we're going to take turns uh, to present you uh, with your awards. And the awards is going to uh, be a combination of a nice uh, plaque, which you see here, this glass plaque. And then also commendations from the legislature, uh, from the assembly, as well as from the different uh, government uh, units. So uh, we will also be uh, watching a video of each of the recipients, too, so that we uh, will know uh, some of the fine works that they have done. And each of our council members uh, have a chance to say some nice things about the recipients, too. OK? So uh, I'm going to start with the first two. The first uh, recipient of tonight's uh, Crest Award is Cupertino Educational Endowment Foundation, or uh, short known as SEAF. Cupertino Educational Endowment Foundation, better known as SEAF, can also be called the group that fills the gap. 
The gap in this case is the void between public school funding and those extra programs that lift the Cupertino Union School District to a higher level of educational excellence. Since its inception nearly 20 years ago, CIF has raised more than $7.2 million for local school programs such as art, music, computers, and teacher training. Last year alone, the organization donated $650,000 to district schools. Our cause at CIF is pretty compelling. I mean, after all, at the end of the day, the beneficiaries are our children. For traditional fundraising, CIF relies on a cadre of volunteers that includes parents, community leaders, and local businessmen and women. Together they plan an annual gala in the fall and a golf tournament in the spring. I think that one thing about our events is that our volunteers very much enjoy uh, working on the events. They have, they're very creative and um, I think because of the, uh, the, the flair and style uh, and the tradition of the events that people really um, enjoy and consider it a privilege to, to be involved. Two years ago, CIF launched a $6 million campaign to create a new endowment for arts and information technology. Today, less than $1 million remains to be raised, but securing those final dollars will be a challenge. During the month of May, we will be looking for the community support in closing uh, this final stage of our new campaign. We still have $800,000 to raise and you will see and hear about uh, our individual requests for support as you go through this month. Again, CIF will turn to its dedicated core of volunteers to help reach this campaign goal. Distributing information, manning telephones, spreading the word. The volunteers no doubt will work their magic in the community. Well, I, I think the volunteers really enjoy uh, working together. There are wonderful friendships that are formed working hard together. Many of our volunteers have, like myself, uh, had their children educated through the school district uh, and actually many of our contributors have seen what the school district offers and feel compelled to continue this high standard that the school district has attained and this is a compelling factor in helping them feel good about contributing to our new foundation. I would like to call up our C President Don McLeod. We give him a warm round of applause. Congratulations, Don. I just want to say some nice things about CIF and um, have a long uh, association with Steve, uh, CIF uh, beginning in my days when I was on school board. This was back in 1991. So I know firsthand all the great work that they have done for our school district here in Cupertino. Um, they serve, I have some numbers here, 16,000 students and 800 teachers. And as mentioned in the tape, they provide a lot of funding to fill in the gaps uh, of our education, whether it be going to music and performance, whether it be going to teacher education, uh, whether it be going for cultural activities. Uh, CIF has always been there for our students. And as people know, our schools in our community are some of the best in the country. And for me, for us in our community, uh, we know that an important factor that makes that happen is the support that C has given to the schools uh, to make it so good that the excellence and the quality that we have here. Um, as was mentioned in the uh, program uh, just now, in the tape just now, uh, Steve is now again uh, finishing their campaign. Amazingly, they have raised $5 million and they're raising another million dollars from the community right now. And I had the honor of being involved uh, as their MC uh, in their community uh, showcase a couple of weeks ago over at Valco. And many of us, when we were there, saw all these groups of performing groups music groups, bands, choirs from our different schools all performing in the same stage there at Valco. And we know that this really completes their education and this is really something very special that we have here in Cupertino. So on behalf of our community, it's a great pleasure for me to thank you, uh, Don, and see for the wonderful work that you have done for our community. I'd like to say something. Thank you. Oh, is there some people? <laughs> okay. And here are 
uh, some more Thank you. certificates. Lots, lots of material here. Lots of nice, <laughs> nice material. <laughs> and here. Cool. Please say something. Uh, none of our foundation would be possible without the support of the community, but I think it's very important at this particular event to recognize the support that we've received from the City Council, and particularly Michael, who supported us recently in a number of our, our events. He really walks the talk in valuing education in this community. But really, I want to also thank our Vice Mayor, Sandy, who is actually a member of our advisory board at CIF for her permanent continuing support. Sandy is really an example of someone who makes the community feel good about supporting things like our foundation. I really appreciate that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. The next person I have the uh, honor of honoring is Anne Wu. Uh, Anne, would you please come up? Anne Wu believes art, particularly performing art, speaks across cultural lines. Music and dance are the, what I call the, the universal language everybody can appreciate, can understand. Twelve years ago, Anne founded the Chinese Performing Artists of America organization, a group that promotes cultural awareness and provides art education to young people. She traded her full-time job as a Silicon Valley design engineer for her passion, performing arts, and she has no regrets. Whenever we talk about di that, that diversity, that means we are talking about different uh, people from uh, different ethnic communities with the different backgrounds, uh, with different experiences. And, but a lot of times through the um, performing art, I think from the past experience, performing art uh, are the easiest means to, to com communicate. Drawing on her engineer and business backgrounds, as well as her training in dance, Anne has used her talents to help the Quota Club, the Cupertino Sinchu Sister City Association, the Lunar New Year Unity Parade, and a variety of other worthy causes. She works tirelessly, coordinating free community performances and cultural workshops for students. And she is always willing to organize benefit performances for victims of local and international disasters. I think I have been a volunteer for the last 30 years. So to me, it's just like breathing, you know, as natural as breathing or uh, eating a sandwich. You know? So it's, it's, to me, it's almost everyday life. Uh, being a volunteer is very re re rewarding because you always feel that you are helping others. Give Anne Will a round of applause. <laughs> Love to uh, quote Anne, um, volunteering is like breathing, right? It's as natural as breathing. If everybody were like that, that would be great. I've known Ann Wu for many, many years now, and uh, she has become a, um, not only a longtime uh, resident here in Cupertino, but she has been supportive of so many of our activities here in Cupertino, uh, whether it be the f uh, uh, 4th of July uh, performances that she had done for us for many years, uh, whether it be the more recent Lunar New Year parade performances, and all the community activities uh, that she has done here. I think uh, she has really uh, brought world-class performances uh, to Cupertino and absolutely en enriched our cultural life here. Uh, a few other things I want to mention about Anne uh, that I don't know if it was mentioned up there, but um, um, being a, a Chinese-American woman, I particularly want to mention this, that she is a groundbreaker in so many ways. Uh, Anne went to college at Berkeley as the only female in a class of 120 in her electrical engineering class. 
Wow. <laughs> so she is a great role model for our young women uh, out there and our students. Uh, she worked at Fairchild Semiconductor as a design engineer and was the first woman circuit design engineer in Silicon Valley. Now that's w worth an award right in itself. While at Fair Fairchild, she earned her master's in electrical engineering in San Jose State in 1991 and was featured in an article in the San Jose Mercury News when she presented her first CPAA performance at the Flint Center. So on behalf of our community, I really want to thank Anne for her uh, enthusiasm, uh, for her willingness to share her talents with the community, and for her willingness to reach out to everyone in our community and to bring us the highest standards of cultural performances to our community. Thank you so much, Anne. Thank you. And then here are some commendations from our elected officials. Thank you. Say something. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you very much, and thank uh, Michael for all these kind words. I'm really o overwhelmed. I'm really honored here, and but. Actually, I feel that there are a lot of people who deserve this honor more than I, I do. I can, you know, I mean, pick at least 10 of you there can really deserve this honor. Um, I have been a Cupertino resident for 22 years, but I like to confess that only in about maybe six or seven years that I really involved with uh, Cupertino. And lately, I travel a lot. When I come back to Cupertino, and I always say, there's no place like home. Thank you. <laughs> Congratulations. And to present uh, the next set of uh, awardees, I would like to introduce uh, Vice Mayor Sandy James. Thank you, Michael. There are plenty of seats in here. If those of you standing in the back want to come forward and find yourself a seat. Um, I am very, very honored to uh, present the next award to a very good friend and someone I've known for about 15 years, Mr. Chuck Core. Why don't we learn about him? For anyone thinking about becoming a volunteer in Cupertino, Charles Kaur has a few words of advice. Jump in, the water's great. Uh, our city is, is loaded with opportunities to volunteer, to be involved, whether it's uh, on a commission, whether it's in an organization, a service club, no matter what, it, you get more out of it than, it than you put into it. Chuck should know. He's dedicated thousands of hours over a 30-year period in service to the Cupertino community. A current city planning commissioner, he has also been on a park design committee, the new library steering committee, and the public safety commission. All this while occupied with a 35-year career in the Cupertino Union School District. But Chuck has always found time for Cupertino community services, where he's been a board member for six years. Every year we have a fundraising barbecue in September over at Blackberry Farm. And I was asked to be on that committee and help out a little bit, and that sounded like a grand thing to me, so I did that. And then the next thing, it was, well, maybe would you like to be on our board? And then how about being an officer? And just over the years, it, it's grown until uh, I went through the chairs of the officers and became uh, president of the organization. CCS staff cite Chuck's determined leadership and skilled management in helping the agency weather an internal transition and get a $7.2 million building project off the ground both at the same time. The result, they say, is an organization that is stronger and more effective than ever before. How does he do it all? If you want to do all these things, you want to be involved, you've got to learn to manage your time well and make the most of every moment. Why don't you come on up? Okay. 
Um, as I said, I've known Chuck for a long time. I think we met in 1988 and over here. And um, I was on the Cupertino School Board when uh, Chuck was the director of uh, facilities. And we uh, worked together to on Measure A to raise $71 million for the schools. And then we gave the director of facilities the job of renovating all those schools. And that was an incredible challenge, which, uh, which Chuck handled very well, because he not only understood um, building and land development, but he had been a teacher and a principal, and so he really understood the hearts and minds of the teaching staff, the parents, and the students, and that was an uh, incredible uh, bonus for those of us uh, who were asking him to do a very difficult job. As far as the city is concerned, Chuck has been our Parks and Rec Commission and brought to that commission um, the knowledge of the partnership that the city of Cupertino has with the Cupertino School District. And, and we worked on that together, too, for many years. That was a partnership where the, um, the schools allowed the city to develop the uh, playground and the uh, sports facilities in return for us being able to use them for parks and rec. It was a great, um, a great program where mutual uh, public need was met with public dollars with two agencies that didn't have enough to do it on their own. He's a great planning commissioner, and his work on CCS has just been um, inspirational. Uh, if you haven't been over to the new CCS office and the, the affordable housing project with 24 uh, uh, homes for, for people um, that couldn't have afforded them otherwise, Chuck Core is on the board. He was on that committee, and he's one of the reasons that we were able to put that project together for this community. He is a wonderful example of putting your energy and your time your mind and your heart to work to help other people. Congratulations, Chuck. Thank you, Would you like to speak? Sure. Thank you, Sandy. And, and I guess I really want to thank the city for giving me all the opportunities they have to, to volunteer and to be involved. But you can't do it without support from your friends and from your family. So I really want to thank my family for giving up all the time that I otherwise would have spent with them. So thank you, family, and thank you, city. Thanks, Sandy. I forgot to say that Chuck's a graduate of San Jose State, and I say that because so am I, and so is our next recipient. So there are a few of us around here tonight, I think. Um, again, I am wonderfully honored to present an award to someone I've had the privilege of working with for many years and getting to know um, on many different levels, Linda Reyes. Why don't we listen? <laughs> When you are able to impact someone else's life and realize that you had a direct part in that, in changing someone's life for the better, you can't put those word, that into words. Linda Rios is in a position to impact many young lives. As Deputy Probation Officer with the Santa Clara County Probation Department, she works extensively with the youth in our community and much of her involvement comes after her normal work hours. Linda is committed to making a difference. She's the youth probation officer for the Cupertino Union School District and coordinator of several programs designed to steer kids away from the juvenile justice system. Whenever there is a need, there is Linda. I was starting to see kids who were being cited for skateboarding uh, in areas that were prohibited. And Granted, it was, it was a violation of the city ordinance, but I saw a need. Turning a negative issue into a positive one, Linda convinced many of the youngsters who had been cited to join the city skate park committee and help design a facility. We want what they want. We want them to have a place to go. We want them to feel included in the community because they're a huge part of our community. On the job and during many off-duty hours, Linda focuses on bringing out the best in each child. When I work with minors in particular, one of the key things I always do in, in, in meeting with them is to try to understand what their talents are. I think the key is, is having the ability to help others see the talent within themselves that they have to share with others.
Amanda, come on up here. Um, boy, Linda and I have worked on so many things together. I'm just delighted to give her this award tonight. Um, she's a lady that leads with her heart, but she follows it up with a lot of toughness. And um, she has the respect of this community from the city to the educational institution, uh, certainly public safety, law enforcement. But most importantly, I think, um, and I think Linda agrees with this, she, she has the respect of the youth in this community, and she loves them and respects them dearly. It's something that, that we share uh, between us and have worked very hard in many different areas. Linda is one of the people, along with Janet Shannon, kind of her partner, um, who I always can go to whenever I have an idea, and the Skate Park Committee is a perfect example of it. Also, every 15 minutes, which is a don't um, lead, a, actually it's, it's helping youth lead a drug-free life with kind of an emphasis on don't drink and drive. And Operation Outreach, um, same kind of program. Linda was right there all along when we wanted to start a Cops and Teens sit down and get to know each other. Linda was one of the resources that, that I was able to draw upon and that helped to pull that program together. Uh, her youth court program is outstanding. Um, if you haven't ever been, you should contact her and, and go and view that. It is a wonderful program that really does divert young people who are kind of going down the wrong path and trains others that haven't tried that route uh, as to reasons why they shouldn't. What I respect most about Linda Rios is that she really intensely cares about the people she touches. And she doesn't just touch the youth of our community, well, they are critically important, but she touches the parents and the teachers and the elected officials and those of us that ever meet her or ever have the opportunity and the privilege to spend time with her. Congratulations. I am delighted to give you this award tonight. Thank you, Sandy. Thank you, council members. Thank you, Mayor Chang. I am extremely humbled and honored by this award. And I think Sandy put it into words, my passion for youth. I have always had a passion for youth. I've always enjoyed serving them. Uh, I believe it's so important to find your passion in life. That has always been my passion. And I am so thrilled to be able to service a community that values youth and so thrilled and honored to have the opportunity to serve a community that puts forth the needs of youth um, in proactive and intervention type programs. And I'm very humbled by this because this is what I love to do and to, to get an award for it is, is above and beyond. So thank you very much. And now I would like to introduce our former mayor and present councilman, Richard Lowenthal. Well, it's my honor to be here tonight, and I am so lucky to have uh, my, my two honorees because they're both good friends of mine, and I've, uh, I've had the pleasure of working with them on some of their projects. Um, well, it's hard not to um, because these uh, these people are are everywhere in the city. Um, so uh, I'd like to uh, uh, first, uh, you know, we'll be talking about um, George Tyson, and George and I are good friends. Uh, I sponsored him into the Rotary Club, and he's made me proud. Um, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But let's uh, let's see the video first. George Tyson doesn't consider himself a superstar, but he's always ready to play when someone needs a volunteer. I feel more like, like a utility infielder, maybe. One who dabbles or gets involved in many different areas, um, but doesn't have, uh, I can't match what some of these wonderful people do. George is right about getting involved. 
The list of groups that benefit from his volunteerism is a long one. Cupertino Union School District, Cupertino Rotary, the Boy Scouts, American Youth Soccer Organization, the Cupertino Coin Club, to name a few. As a parent of three children, he is especially gratified by his work for the youth of the community. He referees soccer games, chaperones scout camps, and serves as PTA president at Kennedy School. Last year, he sat on district budget and bond advisory committees. So when I just think back, I would say I've done a lot of work that have helped the elderly as well as disabled. And, uh, but I would say the, the work that I've done in support of the kids, and in particular the education, is, is really, I think, means the most to me. A full-time engineer in the pharmaceutical industry, George has plenty to keep himself busy, but his volunteer work has now become a way of life. I just got this, this urge, and the more I did it, the more I, I wanted to do it, and it became uh, something where now the, the problem is, how do I learn how to say no and not overcommit? And that's a constant challenge for me. George, come on up. So George is being honored tonight for his volunteer work. Uh, it isn't enough that he works, uh, he works full time in the pharmaceutical business. It isn't enough that he's raising three fine kids, one of whom I've had the, uh, the real pleasure of coaching in uh, soccer. Um, and they are wonderful kids and they're doing great in school and all of that and he's being a great daddy. But he's, um, he's going way beyond that as being a, just a stellar volunteer. He is the volunteer in Cupertino. Um, uh, and his passion for for kids comes through everywhere. You know, he's uh, he worked to pass a, a bond here to raise money for the schools. He's worked to help them spend it wisely, which is good. Um, and you know that it makes a big difference. Cupertino schools are very low funded, um, among the lowest funded in the state, right near the bottom. In fact, uh, the school district he's been he's been working with is the is the lowest funded school district in the county, uh, and yet. Uh, one of the highest performing, always consistently highest performing, and the difference is volunteers like George, who puts his time into raising the extra money, and into spending it wisely, and into helping the schools operate, and I'm proud to say he's my kid's PTA president. <laughs> That's at Kennedy Middle School. Um, you know, when you sponsor somebody into Rotary, as I, I, I did George into, in the local Rotary Club, you, you never know. Um, some people come in and they and they they're happy to be in the club. Uh, and there's other people that are anxious to work. And George has been anxious to work. Uh, he's, uh, he's contributed mightily to the club. Uh, he, uh, he took on a real tough duty, which was to run the speech contest. But it draws back to his love of kids. So maybe it's easy for him. But it sure made a difference to me. Uh, we've we've uh, refereed AYSO games together. Uh, we learned how to do that together. Uh, he went to uh, the finest university on the planet, um, UC Berkeley, and I know because Go Bears, we're both from there. Although he did get an MBA from San Jose State, so he'll tie that back. Um, I'm proud to know George and proud to work alongside you in these volunteer activities and so happy that you got this award. It's really well deserved, George. Thanks very much. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much, Richard, for those kind words. Uh, I feel very humbled up here because I, I really do see better volunteers than I am everywhere I go. But one thing that I can't forget is that I rely so much on the, the support of my wonderful family because I'm often heading out to a PTA meeting or maybe refereeing some other kids' uh, game, and so they're not seeing me then. So really, I feel like this, this award is as much for them as it is for me. Thank you. Our next honoree uh, is, an, is another uh, AYSO graduate. I, I don't know, maybe that's just part of the school of being a volunteer in Cupertino, but um, I'd like to introduce um, uh, my friend Joe Tembrock, and let's see the video about Joe. I grew up in a small town in northern Minnesota, 200 people. And when the church needed painting, my dad would say, son, church needs painting. And so my brother and I painted the church and did stuff like that. 
Joe Tembrock began volunteering at an early age, and 50 years later, he's still at it. After moving here in 1967, he wasted no time becoming involved in St. Joseph of Cupertino Church, where he helped start an outreach program for low-income residents. Joe's work with the church led him to a board position with Sacred Heart Community Services, and then he eventually became one of the founding members of Cupertino Community Services, an agency that continues to benefit from his volunteer efforts. The other part of it is I absolutely love volunteering. Uh, it, it's never a, never a pain. I, I, I try and make the time to, to volunteer, and uh, uh, you never know in many cases what's going to happen. I would say one thing over time, uh, I'm someone that perseveres. I don't lightly give up on, on an idea or a, or a mission or a goal. CCS administrators credit Joe's determination and expertise in helping the agency evolve from a one office operation to a multi-service agency helping thousands of people each year. And through it all, the board meetings, the special events, the long hours and the dedicated effort, Joe never loses his sense of humor. You've got to have people on our team that work together, that, and ideally that have fun. That's one of the things that uh, when I'm involved in, in organizations and people are saying, oh, this is so hard and this is da-da-da, and we've got to have fun. Because if, if people don't have fun, they, they, they quit. You know, it's, it's not worth it if it's all hassle. Joe, could you come on up, please? Congratulations, Joe. Uh, Joe uh, and I go back. The first place that I met Joe was because uh, he raises good kids. Uh, so some similarity with, with George. But um, Joe's just spectacular daughter, Amy, used to babysit my, my older one when she was a toddler. So that's, that's how I first uh, knew the Tembrocks. Um, Joe uh, has... He, he was a founder of Cupertino Community Services, and uh, it was a long time ago. That was 30 years ago, and it was known as uh, Cupertino Roundup, I think, in those days. Um, and he has been involved for 30 years. We tried to throw him out a few times, but he keeps coming back. Um, uh, we have some kind of term limit. I think it's something like eight years. But uh, on the other hand, I was working with Joe uh, just last week. Uh, on uh, getting started again on strategic planning for CCS for his probably 10th time. Um, I think probably the culmination of his help at CCS was building this affordable housing project and the new offices for CCS. Um, and what really made the difference in having Joe there was not just another pair of hands and eyes, but we looked to Joe for leadership and we look for, uh, to Joe for his technical skills. Um, when he comes in, he adds more than just another voice. He adds uh, intelligence, uh, caring, and the passion to get things done right, and that's what, what, uh, what his committee and he's led CCS to do. Um, Joe uh, was also involved in AYSO girls soccer. It seems to be, to, there seems to be a thread there. Uh, you know, he's, you saw he's involved in the church at St. Joseph's. Uh, he's been a, a great friend to me, uh, and he's also frequently um, mentioned as the, the guy that rides the bike. Uh, now, now, you've heard other people that, that ride their bike as an alternative to cars. Uh, Joe does it because he cares about the environment. Uh, he doesn't need to drive a car. And if you ever saw his car, you'd actually understand the real reason. <laughs> He has the ugliest old brown station wagon, barely brown, uh, and I wouldn't be seen in it either. So I, that's the real reason that Joe rides a bike. But uh, great sense of humor, great uh, a great member of our community. You know, they um, Joe and Judy recently uh, moved out of the area to Santa Rosa, I think. Is it? Right. Um, he still serves on the board, still comes down to the board of the CCS meetings. Uh, is probably one of the. Uh, the few people that are on time, even though driving down from Santa Rosa, which must be a, about a two-hour drive, uh, four hours round trip. He hates being in that car, you have to remember, but he'll do it for CCS, and he'll do it for Cupertino. So thanks, Joe, very much. Well, thank you very much for this award. Cupertino is really a special place, uh, and I'd also like to uh, you know, recognize Cupertino Community Services. It's just a beautiful organization, wonderful place to volunteer, lots of, lots of exciting opportunities. 
I want to mention, uh, I want to thank uh, my wife Judy for all the support that she's given uh, volunteering these, these many years. And I want to mention something that maybe uh, most of you don't realize about Judy. We had uh, four young kids uh, many years ago, and there was an opportunity to make a real difference in the city of Cupertino. There was a plan to uh, make a golf course out of McClellan Ranch Park. And Judy and three other women worked their darndest, and they were able to convince the city that that should be a park, and so it is. So I want to pass that little tidbit on. So our next presenter tonight will be uh, my, uh, my colleague and fellow council member, Dolly Sandoval. Good evening. It's my honor tonight to make two presentations. The first one is to a community member that I've just met recently at a Five C's meeting. Her name is Fari Aberg. Let's learn a little bit more about her. Fari Aberg, a Cupertino resident for 20 years, believes a neighborhood can spring up anywhere in the city, even on a main thoroughfare. And she can prove it. Fari spent four years knocking on the doors of her Blaney Avenue neighbors, drumming up interest in the city's emergency response program. Today, 60 residences on that long, busy street are active in emergency preparation activities, thanks to her efforts. They call their group BRIT. Blaney rides it together. I thought about it after we had the 89 earthquake. I was ready to leave town because I was so worried and we got all nervous because I have never been in such a big earthquake. And we were not prepared at all. And rather than leaving town, I decided to do something about it. But Fari's mission to connect neighbors and other community groups extends beyond Blaney Avenue. A founding member of the Five Seas Cultural Organization, her hard work helped get the city's first international film festival off the ground. And she's an enthusiastic participant in Cupertino's new block leader program. In fact, whenever a volunteer opportunity arises, Fari is usually the first in line. I just want to live in a better community and I like to know my neighbors. <clears throat> Uh, I like good for everybody around me, um, and I think everything good comes out of the, being a volunteer. And we shouldn't expect everybody to do everything for us. We should do our, uh, our duty as the residents of the city. Fari, right, would you join me up here, please? After that big earthquake hit back in 1989, Fari did take to the streets, literally, and that's why I'm so proud to be able to honor her tonight at our Crest Awards where extra steps are taken by our community members. Fari not only organized her block, a very long block, mind you, that many of us travel up and down uh, Blaney Road, but she also trained uh, under the CERT guidelines and so actually is able to educate other neighbors and other community members in emergency preparedness in making sure that the community is well taken care of at all times. The cinema at sundown and the Five C's organization really brings a lot of community members together. We educate ourselves on um, our differences and our similarities. Fari, I'm so glad you didn't leave after that earthquake. Come up here. <laughs> I'm so glad you didn't leave after that earthquake and that you really have stepped up to the plate and made us proud as you're our resident in our city of Cupertino. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Say a few words. I have to second what everybody else. Um, looking around the room, I think um, there are a lot more people around that is, deserve this award more than I do. Um, the Cupertino is a really a great city, and it's just great people in the city that support whatever residents do, no matter who you are. As long as you want to do something, they train you, they open the door for you, whatever you need. Just pick up the phone or just say I want to do it and you have the support of everybody in the city and I'd like to thank all the council members 
Thank you, Dolly. And uh, all, the, all my friends and the neighbors, that uh, they have always been helpful to make us uh, live in a better city. Thank you. I'm a teacher by trade. It's my honor, and I'm very humbled to be able to award our next recipient the, the Cupertino Crest Award. Let's learn a little bit, please, about Fusako Hoyerup. Fusako Hoyerup says her art is like a stone thrown into a lake, creating wider and wider ripples that move across the surface such as the effect of ikebana or Japanese flower arranging. Beauty gives way to inner peace, instilling a sense of harmony with the world. Yeah, it is important for us because we are dealing with natural beauty, plants and flowers, which comes from nature. And uh, uh, to create ikebana art in a small scale is like you're bringing nature into your home. And uh, when you are in nature, in the nature, in the wood, or by the water, or by the flowers, the trees, you yourself feel calm and so soothing. And this is things that uh, in such a, um, uncertain and volatile times, we need that kind of uh, uh, calm and uh, um, feeling from nature. For more than 30 years, Fusako has passed along her passion for nature to hundreds of local Ikebana students. She teaches seven classes a week, conducts countless demonstrations, and donates lovely arrangements to any worthy cause in Cupertino. Every other year for six months, she and her students prepare for a massive flower show at the Quinlan Center, a free community event that drew 5,000 visitors this year and featured more than 150 floral arrangements. Finding beauty in a troubled world is at the root of Fusako's efforts as she encourages her students to draw strength from the glories of nature. This was especially true after the September 11th disaster. My students are so almost crying face, so I was. And then uh, after they were working with flowers, they start to chat and they're laughing and oh, and then uh, more chatting and more laughing. And after three hours, people were so, students were so happy. That was the most amazing uh, miracle happened to me. Just flowers, fresh flowers. There's a saying, those who can, do. Will those who really can, teach. Thank you. Thank you. As a 30-year resident here in Cupertino, I'm sure the Fremont Union High School uh, District's adult education program is very proud of you, Fusako, as we are here in Cupertino. As a founder of the Wafu School of Ikebana, you have brought a calm passion, sensitivity, and uh, much support to our community, and we appreciate that. The flower, the flower arrangements that you saw both in the video and you undoubtedly have seen around town, either by Fusaka herself or by one of her many students, are beautifully, beautifully blend, both creativity, elegance, and mysticism. The warmth that you bring to your classes and to your students shows in all these different flower arrangements that we see. So we honor you this evening for your support of our community and the joy that you bring to life. Thank you. Thank you. You'd like to say a few words? Okay, let me hold I'm a short person, so I'm gonna go up here. Well, this is extremely honored to receive such a special award from the city of Cupertino. Um, this award, I believe, I know, this award belongs to my students, their family, staff members of adult education program, friends, 
and my husband. They have been so supportive, whatever we or I plan to do. Last couple flower shows, we were very, very pleased uh, to give such a wonderful flower show. One was right after the September 11th, everyone's heart was so heavy. However, we pulled together 127 students and myself participated in the show. And in the beautiful Quinlan Community Centers, we used all the facilities. We pulled over 4,000 visitors and we shared the beauty, joy, and peace through the flower arrangements. And this year, we were also facing to the war, Iraq war. Just before the Iraq war, we had flower show. And also, we were very heavy when the war is going to start, how we can pull together in such a volatile times. But we, all my students, myself, their friends and families, we pulled together and made such a gorgeous, gorgeous flower shows in the Quinlan Community Center. This time, we have pulled over 5,000 visitors. There were tears, and I got tears too. I want to thank you, all the community members, of course, city of Cupertino. I think a real, you deserve the Crest Award because you certainly helps us. <laughs> thank you very, very much. It's great to know that those are tears of happiness. I'd like to turn this over now to our mayor, Michael Chang. Thank you so much, Council Member Dottie Sandoval. And um, Cupertino must be a very special place because we have people traveling to Cupertino to serve our residents. And so for our next person, uh, our next recipient of this award is Victor Wong. So let's take a look at what he does to deserve this re award. American citizenship for many immigrants is a dream beyond reach, but Victor Wong captures the dream and makes it real. Every Monday for the past two years, Victor has been teaching citizenship courses to capacity classes at the Cupertino Senior Center. Nearly 200 new immigrants have attended his sessions, and 40 of his students are now U.S. citizens. You know, when, when they go through the interview and they pass, they come back and they share their experience. They tell us what was asked, and they, and they tell, tell us all about it. And, and before the interview, they're very quiet, introvert. And then when they come back and they, get, they give the report, they're very animated. In fact, sometimes they're very humorous. So you, you can actually see the change in, in the students uh, and the relief that they have uh, when they achieve. And, uh, and when they achieve it, you know, it's, it's, it's like graduating from college. You know, so you, you can see the facial expression. You can see the emotions. So, so, so that's really satisfying to be able to be able to, with your own eyes, see that type of change and see the end point. When the San Francisco native retired from IBM 10 years ago, he began teaching citizenship and English classes. At the Senior Center, he serves as a caring liaison between his students and government immigration agencies, cutting through red tape and assisting wherever he is needed. With humor and compassion, Victor plays the roles of teacher, coach, counselor, and friend. I think I get more of it than the people that I help, you know, it's that, um, it's, it's, it's a tremendous satisfaction, uh, you know, when you're able to provide some kind of, um, fulfill some kind of need. Victor Wong, would you help me congratulate him, Victor? Congratulations, Victor. Um, as the tape mentioned, he has done a lot in our, uh, in our city. And uh, some of the statistics that uh, I have here has to do with his work here in our senior center. I'm just looking for that now. And um, Victor, who is an experienced citizenship instru instructor, 
uh, volunteered to start a class, and through him, the Senior Center established a working relationship with the Immigration and Naturalization Services. They sent officers to the Senior Center two or three times a year to conduct workshops that are open to the public. Many immigrants who are Cupertino residents use these opportunities to obtain the first-hand information. They conducted five seminars here with over 600 people participating. And as was mentioned, uh, he had uh, over 200 members in his class, and then 40 of them have already obtained their U.S. citizenship. Um, he not only taught U.S. history and government, but English as well, acted as their coach to lead them through the interview process, calmed their fears, and provided encouragement. He recruited his friends to come on Mondays to conduct mock interviews by asking questions in the application forms, U.S. history, and government. I uh, see a little bit of a theme here. If um, uh, one of our earlier uh, awardees, Ann Wu, if her passion is to share culture uh, within our community, I see uh, Victor's passion as uh, helping uh, new immigrants uh, become Americans and willing uh, to go out there to help them uh, with their immigration, with their uh, citizenship preparation, uh, with their English skills, so that they, like all of us, can become very good Americans. Um, he was born in San Francisco, and he currently lives in South San Francisco, I just found out. And, South San Jose. Uh, South San Jose, okay. South San Jose, so it's not that far, but uh, still outside, and uh, coming here to Cupertino to help us. He has served uh, with distinction in many activities in the community. He is a trustee of the Chinese Historical Project and the past chairman of the Chinese Summer Festival, served on the board of directors um, for a Chinese Historical and Cultural Project, and was instrumental for raising funds for a Kong Temple uh, replica, uh, which was the spiritual center of the long lost Chinatown in San Jose, which is called Highlandville. Uh, Victor was also chair of the San Jose Human Relations Commission, a founding member of ACI, Asian Americans for Community Involvement, past president of the Chinese American Citizens League of Santa Clara, as well as the Alpha Rams Omega, a Chinese YMCA service club that has been together for over 49 years. On behalf of our residents, Cupertino, Victor, thank you for your service. Well, first of all, I, I, I do want to thank the um, city of Cupertino for this honor, and particularly to receive the award directly from Michael, um, your mayor, whom I have worked with uh, in previous projects. And also, particularly, I'm happy to hear from Dave that your uh, fellow council member, my friend Patrick Quatt, will be back with you soon. So that, that is uh, very good news. But also, I, I, I do, as the previous recipients, uh, I want to thank my wife, Elsie, because I, I think all of us who have been involved with volunteer work knows that it's the support of our spouse is one of the essential ingredients to uh, enabling us to go out and do our volunteer work. And so this, I, I, I really I want to probably thank my wife, uh, Elsie. And my, my last remark is that as I teach citizenship uh, to the immigrants, I often ask myself, how would I feel if I go to China or Taiwan and in Mandarin have to learn the history and the government and, and all the other related questions and be able to answer it? And this is the thing that gives me a, a lot of pride. And so with that, I really want to share this uh, award with my students, for it is my students who take the extra step to learn about our country, the government, the history, which enabled them to get to citizenship. So I do want to thank them for that opportunity, and I do want to share this award with them. Thank you. So we come to our last, but certainly not least, 
awardee tonight. And this is the Toyokawa Sister City Committee and its president, Lucille Honick. Children have a way of breaking down barriers, and the Cupertino Toyokawa Sister City Committee has spent 22 years demonstrating how it's done. That's how long the committee has been sponsoring a cultural exchange between local students and their Japanese counterparts. Led by Lucille Honig, a founding member of the committee, the group consists of a dedicated nucleus of volunteers who believe passionately in the ideas of promoting friendship and understanding beyond global boundaries. I think we all feel really strongly about the program and many of us have had our own children be able to go and we saw what a wonderful thing it did for them to be able to go over and to live in someone's home. And these students are only junior high, so they're really young and they're just, they're just great kids. Toyokawa in Japan has been Cupertino's sister city for 25 years. To help defray student travel costs, the committee puts on the annual Cherry Blossom Festival, an event that provides area residents with an authentic taste of Japan. Planning and managing the two-day festival requires a Herculean effort for the small sister city committee. The phone never stops ringing. Um, you know, it's a real commitment to, to chair something like this. And, um, it just takes a lot of time, but it's, it's very, very rewarding on the weekend when you see everything come together. The greatest reward, though, is in the faces of the students, those who leave Cupertino for Japan and those who arrive here from Toyokawa. You see the kids get off the bus and they're starry-eyed, they're scared. Uh, by the time they go home, everybody's crying. Help me uh, congratulate Lucille Honig and the Toyokawa Sister City Committee. Uh, it's true, this um, Cherry Blossom Festival is one of our most well attended festival here in Cupertino and most popular for many, many years. And it's amazing to a lot of people. Most people don't know that the core committee that puts it on every year is uh, actually not a very large committee, as was mentioned in the tape. So they work tirelessly, but they really have to act together. Each year, if you see them in action, everybody knows what they need to do. And it all comes together uh, each year beautifully for our city. Um, the kind of exchanges that we have with Toyokawa every year, uh, the students that go there, uh, the students that come over here, uh, it really is something that uh, means a lot in their life and absolutely changes uh, many lives uh, when they do something like that. In fact, one of our council members, Richard Lowenthal, her daughter will be going uh, this year. Um, for all those activities, for all those energies, I just want to thank the Toyokawa Sister City Committee. I had the pleasure of uh, traveling uh, with them, uh, leading a delegation uh, to Toyokawa uh, five years ago. Uh, on our 20th anniversary. So this year is going to be our 25th anniversary. We uh, look forward to celebrating it and renewing our friendship with uh, Toyokawa uh, with the help of our sister city uh, committee. Thank you very much. I'm really honored to accept this for the committee members. Um, everybody really works hard at this and we're really proud of what we do. We want to thank, thank the city council members and the city staff who help support us and also the school district that helps support us on the student exchange. Um, it means a lot to us to have something like this continue and uh, we hope it continues for a long time. We're also taking a delegation of adults over this year for our 25th, so we're looking for anybody who would like to join us. Thank you. Congratulations one again, once again to all our awardees, all eight of them. They have done so much for Cupertino. It's a very special night for us uh, to be able to here to honor them in their different work. 
uh, each of our council members, I'm sure, uh, want to be the person to be giving the award to each one of them because each one of them are all so special. So I want to also uh, thank everyone uh, who have come here uh, to watch this program and to uh, congratulate our awardees. Uh, let us now adjourn to a reception outside uh, where we can continue to socialize. Thank you so much.